welcome to the Bigfoot Press, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's uh, give a warm welcome to Jerome and Taylor May Fitu. Oh, there they are. There they are. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for, for coming along. We really appreciate um, your time and um, what you guys have given up on this Saturday morning. It's a very special um, recording this morning in that uh, they have given us their time on a Saturday. They are family people. They have a young family. Uh, but before we get to that, we want to just thank you for coming along. We appreciate both of you guys. And um, like I said, you're very humble people who would go, man, I don't have a story. What are you talking about? I don't have a story. I don't like being on camera, man. What? But nevertheless, you guys have said yes, and we really do appreciate that. And, um, yeah, we're looking forward to, and I know a little bit about your story, just a very little bit uh, about what you guys have been through um, and are going through. And uh, uh, not that it's, that sounded pretty tragic. Okay, sorry about that. I, and that sounded like you guys are going through some hardship, but, and you might be. Who knows? But um, I'll leave that for you guys to, to share this morning. Um but yeah, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Having us. Very, very much. Three hours away from your kids, not bad. And why not? Yeah. And why not? We you know, great. We roll with it. We roll with it. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, eh? especially on the weekend. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is nice. Nice to them for a minute. Mm. Well, that, that's cool. And, and, and the thing is, like, you know, as we were saying uh, prior to this, was like, you know, everyone has a story, right? And we all have a journey. And you guys have um, had a wonderful journey. And, of course, you know, you guys are still in that journey. So it's always a good mix, you know, with uh, with us. And so just, just to kick things off, uh, I, I thought well, I'll ask you a couple of very important questions. Um, mm. One of them being, okay, before we you know, kick off is like, Backstreet Boys, <laughs> or instance, I just I, I I need I need to know so then I can then move on. Oh, yeah, yeah, move yeah. forward. We're going straight there. Yeah. I'm, I'm not right going to the character yeah. check, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want to know if, it, if this is going to continue. Yeah, yeah. If you're worth yeah. keeping on the podcast. Just yeah. take the. Well, that's easy for me. But I feel like Jerome's struggling with this. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's easy for you. Easy and, for me. And say you've got yours. Hands down. For yeah. you, the first question. Huh? So, so like a, you know, I've got one angle to come from. So like obviously, you know, grew up in the like late nineties, early two thousands, and my introduction into Backstreet slash NSYNC was my auntie. Right? She shout out Auntie Leanna. She used to blast them from her room all the time. So I heard a lot of Backstreet, which is, I feel like they've got a lot of good bangers. Mm. And NSYNC didn't really click much, yeah. but the the JT, the Justin Timberlake, that was a byproduct of that. I love that guy. Love his music. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's hard for me because, well, really, no one really came out of Backstreet on the other side very big like like as a solo artist yeah exactly so like no no long answer a long like build up to that was i would say backstreet boys but like gotta give a shout out to justin timberlake because yeah well, that guy's music was uh yeah. you know you can't you can't use the term banger without um banging one out like yeah. that's almost impossible what what banger, Which banger? <laughs> if on earth if anywhere on earth is a banger by Backstreet Boys, did you say? Yes. Well, I might be offending it's a lot of Backstreet Boys. So we're comparing Backstreet Boys to NSYNC. Though. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but you you said, and I quote, okay. you said <laughs> Auntie Leanna used to blast out some bangers. Yeah. What are they? Ooh, what, what bangers are we referring to? Um. <laughs> yeah, look, I you know, I'm not going to... I, I don't know the names of the song, I guess. What, what about but it? play play the song, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, like, we might we might have a yeah yeah a foot tap yeah. beggar. <laughs> <laughs> you you took the longest way to say you like sitting on the fence. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> that's um. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. But but we but we will we, we will return to the sitting on the fence stuff right now because I'm judging. You know, yeah, because exactly. you say banger and not even producing a hum like a hum 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 or hum hum. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe maybe we can come yeah, come back to that later. You know, no, we will. I want to return to that because you found it pretty easy. It's right? so easy. Yeah? It's in sync. You reckon? Obviously. And okay. they have one of the best Christmas songs of all time. Merry Christmas by NC. So good that I actually had them as my go-to Christmas song and my desktop background at work last Christmas. Oh, so that my. good. Oh my goodness. You cannot put that on and not be in the Christmas spirit. And that's music. So you would choose that over Mariah Carey's over Plate yep. One? Yeah. Every year. Okay, so it's sync. It's and, so good. And fence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because of that comment, it's kind of making me lean towards <laughs> Main Street Boys. <laughs> no, <laughs> lean out the door. <laughs> Christmas songs, that's a whole nother. It's a whole nother banger. Exactly. Yeah. That's a whole but nother it banger. It's a good group. To make a good Christmas song. Backstreet Boys. Because I'm, I'm a hymn guy. Know it. You're a hymn guy? Come on. Yeah. Christmas carols. Yeah. yeah. Stay true to take stage yeah, scripture. Exactly. That's that thing. <laughs> so am I. Uh, George Michael had a banger. Faith. Say that. <laughs> it was a thing. Yeah. It was Faith. Sully. That's not bad. That's bad. No, I'm talking about, you know, last Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and faith, faith, man, like, bang on, bang on. But yeah, so I, I just yeah. So I asked that question. Now I can't understand where, where we're all at. Continue, Mister Joe. <laughs> are they are they worthy podcasts? They are very worthy. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the fact that you were just just direct about yeah. like in sync. I know what I like. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell me, knowing what you like, Ooh. how did you find out that you really like this handsome bloke right there? Stanson. So I'm 27 now. I was born in Australia, I know. We don't have this. 27. Wow. Born in Australia, mum's English, dad's from New Zealand. Uh, and then it was just me and mum and my sister growing up, so it was just us three. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was good. I think because it was such a small knit family, it was just the three of us all the time until my sister's partner came along when I was young, six. Uh, and it was just us four for ages. Uh, I think it's good. We got really close. I have a really close relationship with my mum now. Didn't when I was a teenager because I was rude. Yeah, t- uh, tell us about that. Uh, it's just hard. I think you, you're you a teenager. You don't really know what's going on. No one tells you, you know, the full story of stuff. And so they shouldn't, especially at a young age. Uh, and you just start to blame the only person in the room. You know, so it was mum's fault for uh, anything that was happening. Uh, And me and my sister were really close, so, like, she couldn't do anything wrong in my eyes until we, like, fought over clothes. Uh, But, yeah, I I just blame it on my mum, blame any any emotion, any feeling I was feeling on her. And then as I got older, um, I realised that really she was just looking out for me the entire time, you know, and I see different now that I'm a mum and now that I'm not in a space that I was when I was a kid, especially not having uh, my dad there, my dad around at all. Um, that was always her problem as well. That was always something she had to deal with. Um, And that's hard to navigate. I could only imagine. Grateful that I'm not in that situation. But I can see now from an adult point of view that, like, she just did the best that she could the whole time. Mm. And I grew into respecting her for that. So there was a time period we just weren't the best of friends. They say you only know what you know, right? Yeah. Mm. What was the reference point for you having this um, angst, I guess, or this pointed... um, um, frustration towards towards mum. I feel like it was more a balance of she was the only provider for my family, especially while my sister was still in school and still young. Um, and so she was working all the time hmm. in multiple jobs. She'd have like a night shift and then she'd work during the day. And so the time that I saw her was so minimal. And to me, I'm like, she's never home with me, you know? And so... I was just angry about that. So then I felt like I had no parents. Uh, But the truth is she was just doing what she needed to do for me to pay for our rent and to, you know, all the things that I know now. But, yeah, I think that I was just angry that she wasn't around. And I think because my dad wasn't there, I then went, oh, well, I'm going to lose both. You know, and then that's, she's the only one there to take it out. And when she gets home after a long day, her response isn't always, oh, why do you feel this way? It's like, oh, well, I've just worked a 12 hour shift, you know, mm. which I get now. Yeah. But at the time, it's like, oh, angry at me because you have to work. Like, so I look back and I just go, you were so silly, but, you know, you're only, yeah, how I was feeling at the time, I just felt like it was just going to be me against everybody else. Mm. And uh, she was the only one that I could, like, 
take that out of, you know, she was my punching bag Yeah. for my words, so. Was there a moment when you thought, actually, why am I this way? Yeah. Did, 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 was there any turning point before that, or was it when you became a mum that you decided, mm-hmm. or that you, you started to feel the way you feel now yeah. and how your approach was there? I think it's a mixture of two things. First one is when I decided that um, our relationship with my dad wasn't possible for me. That was a choice that then I made versus um, him choosing not to be around type of thing. Uh, so like that was a turning point because then I realised how much I value my mum and her presence throughout my whole life. Um, and then, it's, even if it sounds cringy, the second part of it is meeting Jerome. Um, and having him and his family put such a big influence on me from a young age and seeing that um, not all families are broken and that <coughs> real love can work and you can be together with someone for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then I got to see what that's like as well from a really close point of view, I suppose. I like that. Yeah. You know, it's heartfelt, you know, when, when you start to realise, you know, the things that, you know, you go through and the yeah. choices that you've made. And, you know, of course, which leads us, you know, to, of course, you, my friend, you know, and, you know, tell us a bit about yourself. And, um, yeah, look, grew up in, I was born in New Zealand, built it all. Um, mum and dad were, like, pretty pretty young when they had me. Like, you know, not crazy, they were like, in their early 20s. And, um, yeah, I was born and then I was, you know, it was the only kid for like three years and then had our, had my first brother. And then um, it just felt like from then on, it was just kid after kid. So I'm, I'm one of seven. So good night. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did a bit of moving around. Um, moved around New Zealand to a few different places. Um, and... Yeah, basically did our time in New Zealand and moved to Australia. Um, and it was just like, you know, growing up in New Zealand, you know, people could probably, I guess, find some sort of similarities, but you have that small, like, town, you know, obviously to me, we built it all about massive, like a city, but... You know, there's all of the different problems, whether it be like economics, whether it be gang violence, all of that stuff. So I guess my parents could see how that was starting to grow. Like they had, you know, got a family that affiliated and had mates that, like, that's crazy. But at eight years old, we're like, yeah, I can't wait till I can join a gang till I'm old enough, you know? So that was the conversations we were having at morning tea. Wow. You know? And um, <clears throat> so like that, you know, I guess they could see that happen. Dad dad moved around different jobs, but ended up landing in, um, in retail. And yeah, he got offered a job in Australia uh, within Harvey Norman's. And then, um, yeah, he was like, oh, let's, let's, let's pack up and see if what we can do in Australia. And um, what was real cool is moving to Australia, we were in, moved straight to Penrith had this whole family that we had there that I didn't didn't know we had um, until we moved there and found out that, you know, had all of these cousins and kind of family and that, that they were around when I was a baby, but I don't remember them. They all moved to Sydney as well. Yeah. So, yeah, adopted this big family, which was really cool, had cousins that I was like, did primary school, first year of high school together. So that was really, that was a... A big change for us because you know even though in New Zealand like you can touch shoulders with someone and they end up being a cousin or you know that that whole joke there but we didn't have a tight knit um, outside family it was always just us um, so yeah moving to Sydney but we were able to feel what that was like was really cool and um, yeah once we lived in Sydney for a few years moved to the Gold Coast when I was I was yeah just turned thirteen. When I moved here, yeah, just turned thirteen. Yeah. Did you still have aspirations to join a gang? Like, were you? Like... No, that was see, that was never my. Thing. Oh, okay. So you were talking about that at morning too. Yeah, yeah, that was like that was what my mates were talking. Oh, about. so you gave up on their dream? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, the, the the patch didn't become a thing in my mind anymore. Mum and dad created a gang for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Gang with all the siblings. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> would, you, yeah. would you ever move back? Nah, probably not. You know, I like, I'd love to go back more regularly for like holidays and stuff. Just like mm. now that we've got two kids. It's more yeah, an sure. economical yeah. decision then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a beautiful place, man. Yeah. You've been there, Roger. Yeah. I, I think he, um, you're officially the only ones that I really know. Yeah, right. From, you know, because, you know, just, you know, in my own four walls of South Auckland, that's all I knew. Mm. Yeah, yeah. you go I, further south in Bombay Hills. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, were, <laughs> we were pointed out and told that um, to go to Porirua at one stage, weren't we? Well, that's, but that's another story. Yeah, I know. We, we lived in Porirua yeah. for a few years. So, so my guys... brother was born, my no, second brother, yeah. or first brother, sorry, was born. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so tell us, you're 13, you've arrived in Australia. Um, you, um, and, and tell her, what about you? What, what are you doing at 13 at this stage? Are, are you still... I'm hanging out at the mall a lot, Australia Fair, stomping ground. Yes. Australia Just kidding, Fair. going to the movies, trying to scab money to go to the movies and then get hungry jacks after. So I was just doing that. I was with friends as much as I possibly yeah. could. They were either at my house and I was at theirs and we just, I feel like it was a time where you could just like hang out in your street. Does that, mm. you know what I mean? Like when that was still yeah. safe. Yeah, fences were lower. Yeah, you, you play out like, in the street. Just be in the yep. street all day. So like, you know, I was just being a kid. The, the streets nice. of... The South hard Port. streets of oh the hard streets of Southport. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> hard <laughs> streets of yeah. <laughs> Southport's a beautiful place. The hard streets of Gold Coast, <laughs> man. And here comes this rough make rough boy from New Zealand, and um and and so where do you guys meet? So within a year, where do you guys meet? Yeah, pretty much. It I think was... you moved in June, and then yeah. we met in August. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, and oh. when you're thirteen back then, right, all those years ago, you could. You're, you're going out with someone on the first day. You're not dating them. You're like, will you be my girlfriend? Same day you meet them. And it's like, oh, of course. Don't be silly. Like, we'll get to know each other later. So did you clap them over the head and drag them into yeah. the cave? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it just felt easier. I was like, in that year, that was, that was 2010. That's when, like, social media oh, yeah. really started to, like... Right, yeah, yeah. Facebook was yeah. 2007, yeah, so it would have been three years until yeah. new. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the Bebo generation. Well, that's right. Oh, that's yeah. right. We're of the Bebo. Oh, whew. Yeah. I'm not that old then. <laughs> no. Holy. I sit there thinking, you never, these guys are going to have a shit heart with me. You know? <laughs> yes, that's what <laughs> Man, I, I remember seeing you many hearts. Begging for hearts, <laughs> Joe. You know, nowadays, if, if, you, if I was to ever look at your responses, it would just be seen. <laughs> oh, oh, oh that's you know, what, what, do you, what do you call it? Like ghosting? Yeah, is, that, ghosting. is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you would have ghosted me many times with my hearts that I've sent you. Was I feel like you need therapy. You know? <laughs> Here we go. So, tell us about your first meeting. Uh, so, we had friends that were dating. They were together. And so, Australia's... shout out to your friends. Who were they? Uh, Cody and Carell, right? Yes. Yeah. Shout out, Cody. Yeah. And so, she was like, oh, well, your best friend should obviously date my best friend. And we were like, obviously. So I think we spoke on MSN and Bebo for maybe like a week. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and then that we sounds right. Oh, yeah. Sounds a terrible. Week. And then we uh, decided to meet up at Australia Fair to go. We didn't even go to the movies because we didn't have money. Um, no, yeah, money wasn't a wasn't a thing then. You yeah. just had to use your your wits. Well, that's it. I'm very familiar with that. <laughs> to get around. My yeah. cousin works at the movies. <laughs> 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 I got an uncle who's at. Hungry Jacks or something? Yeah. Georgie Pie. Right. Georgie Pie. <laughs> what was our one? Like, I mean, it was ages ago now. We can't get in trouble. Hey. What? You oh, would, um, one person would buy a ticket. Then you would go to the bathroom. Then you would swap tickets. Because that person's already been seen leaving. And then you just basically recycled the one ticket. Oh, so you, you, yeah, need to, you need to make sure that you make enough noise to be noticed. Yes. Yeah, you always say, oh, sorry, can I just go to the toilet? And yeah. I'll be like, of course you can. Yeah, I'm going to come back, okay? Oh, yeah, sweeter. You know the hallway for the... For the, the corridor. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. But That's strange. For our first, t- first time meeting, we didn't have any money to do that. I think yeah, we you still needed to buy one. So, yeah. so I'll pocket that. <laughs> <laughs> we just did laps around. I think we did like two or three laps wow. around the corner of Australia Fair, and then we shared a Sunday. Yes. Yeah, and yep. then, yeah, we drove and asked me out, obviously. One day was enough. <laughs> and then I was like, of course, don't be stupid. Well, okay, so, so it was the Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, because I'm I'm picturing strawberry flavor. We did chocolate. 
Oh. And I think now, now that I've been with him so long, I know that he is going to sacrifice for me because his favourite is caramel. And he didn't say anything on the day. He just yeah. went with what I wanted. So, yeah, good sign. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I did do that. Yeah. Hey. yeah. So, so we've got the sacrifice of the caramel mm -hmm. and the idea of making enough noise to walk past the guard and go, hey, I'll, I'll be right back. He's very strong. Yeah, smart. That's cool. That, that's a, that's it's a very high cool. stress environment. There's a saying that um, a brother is born out of adversity, and it sounds like you can get a wife or a husband through criminal activity. <laughs> like, that's like, Wow. But I, I, like you bend a, things. You guys are like so. You guys were very open with one another. Yeah. Do you know that's a, that's a that's actually a quite a um that's quite a um a telling feature about your relationship is that do you know when you're older I don't know about you Joe like but you're trying to present yourself the best self that you can yep. to the other or the possible significant other yeah and you're trying to hide away from your shady criminal activity. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you guys had an introduction to. To who you really are, not that you guys are or we, we buy are the tickets. Yeah, you buy, buy yeah. the tickets now, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. We want to establish that. Class, right? No, no class. <laughs> and, and you get to have your caramel, yes. like, right? You get to have your caramel. But like, there's like, absolutely no shame. This is like, yeah. you guys had this oh. team thing down pat from yeah. the start. Yeah, I haven't looked at it that way. Which is awesome. I think that at, your th at 13, you don't have enough life experience to know how to hide yourself from anyone. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. like everything that you put forward is truly who you are at that point because you haven't lived long enough to try and be somebody else. So mm. I think we just met each other at the right time where everything was very gay, I guess. My when you guys out there, like, you know, you guys obviously, like, you know, shared the, your, your milkshake. Mm. Mm. You know, and you sacrificed the caramel, obviously. And, and, you know, from there, how did you guys, like, you know, um, did you guys bounce? Because were you guys in the same, like, neighborhood or in the same? No, no, I was um, I was in Upper Kuma. Yeah. So, yeah, represent Upper Kuma at the time. <laughs> and <laughs> obviously, South Port, different high schools as well. So, it's crazy. We just, like, tried to prioritize any time we could on the weekend. Yeah. To hang out with each other. You know, because at that point I had, um, it was, I had, there was Quay, Bree, Lucy, these are my siblings, Lucy, Mia, and Ella. Mm. So there was, there was, you know, six of us at that point. And my, my family were very big on family comes first. So yeah. to, if I even wanted to see Taylor on the weekend, I had to do all my chores. <laughs> I had to babysit my siblings if something came up for my parents or whatever. So, and until I'd done those things, yeah, Taylor wasn't, wasn't, you know, I couldn't see her. So I had to try and balance that life, my, my home life. So then I could make time to build L at that point, you know, friendship relationship. Yeah. So, so to build on your friendship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah, like, because really, yeah, weekends, that was Weekends, that was it. and then we'd talk on the home phone. Yes. So that was always yeah. scary, and I always made sure and call me because I never wanted to accidentally speak to anyone else. Who used to answer the phone? Like, who, used, who did you dread answering the phone, Taylor? Like, Ophelia. Ophelia? <laughs> Drake, Mum? Because she's just got that strong voice of, like, where well, you want my son talk? <laughs> or she'd say, or she would say, like, oh, he hasn't done his chores, so he's done his chores for call you. And I'm like, okay, of course. No worries. I didn't want to speak to Sorry. Don't want to be talking, no, like you're laughing at your pain. I just want to say something. Jack, if you're watching this, <laughs> listen to this guy, do your chores, eh? <laughs> hey? No? Joe, did you have anything you want to add to that? Or what? <laughs> you want who? No, he's in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were getting yeah. angry, speech. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, it's Bono and his cousin who was living with him at the time and he's like, oh, no, he's in his undies. He can't come right now. He's busy. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's right. I had two cousins who were living with us as well. Wow. Um, okay. They, they, what's it called, for their last years of high school, their, their parents decided... Let's get them to Australia for the same reasons we did opportunities and stuff. So yeah, we had a very full house. Were they older than you? No, the same age. Same age. Same age. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, 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 in this, you know, as you guys have, have grown and gotten to know each other and, and built, um, you know, your, your friendship and relationship going going forward. When did you guys decide that you're gonna meet each other's parents? Or when did you was it was was did you guys like decide? Oh, like, I want you to meet mum or dad or. Did you accidentally go, oh, that's my dad? I, I think I know what it was, Joe. Oh, yeah. I think I know. 
Is so it at this point? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's good. That's <laughs> Talk to that photo. Uh, can, can I ask about that hairstyle? <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, okay, let's I, just, I didn't realize we had that hairstyle like, until I saw somebody else recreating a. Um, you know what, Taylor? I want to ask you about your hairstyle. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's the messy bun, you know, like the I didn't try very hard. Was that the it thing at the time? I don't oh. think so. I don't think so. No. You know what was in is editing your photos with words and weird flowers. That was it. I nailed that. That's okay. the truth. Okay. So, so, so now that I've got the the, the, the messy vibe, yeah. I need to understand the other vibe. Yeah, so can, can you... I've never looked at this picture long enough. <laughs> Do you remember this? Rosary you see what's going Are there rosary bins? Yes, yeah, and I got in trouble for getting... That was his first Christmas gift from me because I didn't know what to buy. They were yeah. popular. And I remember feeling like, oh, no. We don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just the way. Oh, you're the best, Helen. Yeah, like, that was fashion. Yeah, no. I mean, the man's there is not Catholic, but yeah, he's. Uh, he did it for me. There's something there. There's something there. Uh, but yeah. like, like, like the caramel. You yeah, sacrificed, sacrifice. right? So. <laughs> You were so willing. Bad. You were willing to take, you know, the the wrath of mum. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Tell her you pursued. But I needed to know, like, the thoughts behind that hairstyle because I needed to know exactly what it was. What is it? What is it? What is that? Is that like a brush forward hedgehog? Is that what we call it? Or is that is it up the back? Is it up the front? Is it up the front? I need to understand. <laughs> Pulling that right. hair, that hairstyle back. Yeah. Trying to, yeah, trying to. Yeah. They are trying to. You are pulling it right now. <laughs> right Worst there. part of it is the dyeing. The, I was going to ask. The tip of the... There's a light light. There's a light light on mm. your ring. Yes. Right, so... Just um, hands are sending me. I'm like... I'm like... <laughs> I'm like that is up the wild wild. Yeah, yeah, as regards right. to like being pretty tight, I like that. But and you know it wasn't done properly as well. It was box dye from uh, from Coles. Oh, that's all right. And it stayed that color for like what three is, days. <laughs> what is that color? It's meant to be blonde, and then after three days it would turn orange. Oh, yeah, because you know we were just. Young fellas trying to try, look cool, yeah, doing it in our bathrooms. I'm trying to express yourself. That's all. Right. <laughs> It's a right. That's all good. Look, I have no grounds, you know. I've, I've got no hair, so... <laughs> what about this? Oh, is this when you met, oh. is this when you met the parents? Or? This was uh, our first year anniversary. Ah, oh, 14? Yeah. yeah. And our, my mum had dropped us to a restaurant. First time we'd ever eaten in a restaurant without any parents. Oh, yeah. And so we did that. It was so stressful because we didn't know how to order. We were so was, freaked um, out the whole time. It was wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, my first time. Were well, the people had look off the like watching over you guys at the no, restaurant? They dropped us and they left. Yeah, our parents didn't really. They cared, but they just yeah. You know, after a year, they trusted us, uh, and then yeah, we just hung out there the whole night until we got picked up, and we did not enjoy it that much at all because it was so stressful. Mm. Wait, really? Yeah. So, so uh, tell me about this the stress, like you stress just... to. Pick what? Yeah, pick what you want. And we were just there on our own. Like, they dropped us. We walked all the way in on our own, too. So, like, you just feel like a kid. And yeah. you feel like even though we're celebrating something amazing to us, yeah. that you just, like, you don't belong there without your parents, you know, like, without that chaperone. So it was good. It was a good night. But, yeah, it was just a bit stressful. Did you did you think maybe we can do the um the theater thing again and get up and that felt easier. And... Lying and cheating yeah. felt easier. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's the truth, man. That's, man, wow. So this is a year in. Um, tell us about your teenage years. Yeah, tell us about the next couple of years. My Please. mom, just on that, my yeah. mom was like that. She said, like, no boyfriends till you're 25. Wow. And then I remember she dropped me in a Shelly Fair to meet up with Joan, and she saw her, and she, like, called him. Get over here. And within, like, three minutes of her speaking with him, he walked off and she said, you can marry that boy, but if you guys break up, no more boyfriends to 25. So, like, she just gave Joe a free pass to be like, he's the only one you're allowed to date. And if that doesn't work out, then nothing. Because she, in that small time frame, she just went, oh, I love him. You know, and that's a testament to who Jerome is as well. Mm. So tell us about the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it was that long ago. I, I couldn't remember what I said, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just... Tried to be myself, I guess. I I know I'm I'm not someone who will try to, um, you know, make make myself someone 
yeah. I make myself be someone I'm not. Like, I, yeah. I know when I spoke to her, I was just trying to be respectful to her. Because at the end of the day, like, it is her daughter. And she's entrusting me to spend time with her. So, um, yeah, I tried to just, I guess, be myself. But, um, yeah. She knows me yeah, now still more than she yeah. does me. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So, so on, on, on that note, like, you know, I, I, I understand, like, you know, a lot of the times it's, it's not necessarily um, what you say. Like, um, mm. people will always remember how they feel yeah. after you've walked away from their conversation, right? Yeah. And so that matters. So obviously, when you walked away from the conversation, you know, your mum felt something, right? Yeah. Now... You may not remember what you said exactly, but was is, is there like at such a young age, and you have decided that, like subconsciously or something in you, decided that, you know, I I'm comfortable with being myself, and I think that's how I'm gonna approach, you know, any and everything. Is there someone that you sort of mirror, or mirrored, or like you would have seen, you know, set that example for you? Yeah. Or, or, you know, to, to, to be how you are yeah. without even purposely, like, you know, when you start to do yeah. things on purpose because you want to get up, you know, get something, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, to be honest, it'd be my dad. Yeah, my dad. And obviously parts of mum as well. But um, my dad's always someone that I've always looked up to. Um, he's just, you know, like, talk about getting together young, like, They've been together since, I think, Dad was like 21 or 22, Mum was only 19, 20. So, you know, I've, I've heard the stories, but I, I've seen it firsthand. He's just a, he's just a good fella. He's just respectable. Yeah. Same thing, he, he's always himself. I've never yeah. seen my dad put, put a character on. Yeah. He's just been himself in everything he does. So wow. I could just hear him and I could hear my mum always saying like be respectful be you know be true to who you are and that's just something that I've always like carried with me you know Irv touched on it before like my you know our older generation was very strict um you know it wasn't it wasn't easy as well like mum and dad were were strict and I remember when I when I first told them about Taylor it was like okay that's cool but Remember, be friends first. And if yeah. you guys become good friends, then if mm-hmm. the hopes of it growing into something more happens, then it happens. But they always said, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out or for whatever mm-hmm. reason, you know, don't get caught up on it. If that's not what happened, that's, you know, it doesn't work out that way, then, um, yeah, but they always explained to me that, you know, family comes first. But if you're serious about wanting to be in a relationship, then you have to be... Um, Intentional. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was never like, yeah, just going to go into it, get a girlfriend, and then get another one. And, you know, mum and dad always said, be intentional with the... Even just friendships you have. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, so... Wow. Yeah, always, always have... I mean, even to this day, I yeah. always have them kind of can hear their, you know their words and stuff like that so um, yeah one yeah. of the, one of the, I think one of the things that um, um, that sort of had me think of both of you to be a part of the podcast was um, you know I've known you Jerome for probably 10 years now yeah and you've never been anyone who has come across to me like you've arrived like you're very humble you're very humble you're, you're always learning and like, and you, and you sort of enter into a conversation. I see you do this um, around me as well, like as someone who's just willing to hear. Like you're one of the very few people, and I know there'll be people going, "Oh, I listen too," but you know, we're going to say, "Oh, you sad, man." No, but, you um, no, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> but you're one of the very few people who actually like are present with people, and I think it's a, it's a very, um, man, it's, it's, it's admirable, man. It's like. It's very rare that you would get a young man your age. Now, this is going back to the first time I met you, mm. who is able to, and everyone would say this, you know, like people that we know in common, like even Cam would say this, like he would say, man, yeah, there's just something about that guy who just listens. And like when he's listening, you know he's listening. But he's, he's also not just listening, he's there, like he's present. So I, I wonder, could you talk to that, Taylor, like about 
I mean, do you agree or is, does he not listen? Is he only just listen yeah. to me right now? Or is he just putting on a show? But like, no, you know, he, how does um, that translate into your relationship? He's he is good at listening, especially when it counts, which I think is the important thing when it comes to us. With other people, he will always give somebody the time of day, mm. which is mm. why I love him so much. But uh, when it comes to me, he'll when you're with somebody all the time because yeah. we went through this yesterday like pretty much since we got out of school we were together all the time there was really hardly any times that we weren't spending our free time together uh you can't listen all the time to that person mm. it's impossible mm. because not all of it's relevant either sometimes we're speaking to speak uh and i do that a lot specifically at home you know we've got two kids now too so i'm just rattling things off all the time so he's not always listening in that regard but <laughs> when it's something that is like important to me or he could get a vibe that I really need him yeah. uh, he'll always step up and go hold on like I'm going to stop what I'm doing like what do you need from me or you know he'll let me just go off and like tell him yeah. everything I need to get off my chest and I think that that's a big part of why we've been able to so stay good. strong together is because we can stop in and listen and he does that really well mm. yeah it's good yeah definitely man and props to you Jerome like and to dad as well like for the example that he set for you. Yeah. Uh, because I've always wondered that, like, who does, um, I mean, it doesn't keep me up at night, like, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not thinking about it like that, but you know what I mean? Like, young men like you are very fascinating in that, you're very rare, and like, uh, I wonder who, you know, who do you feed from in, in order to be able to give so much of yourself? And I'll probably ask you this as well, Taylor, because you're a phenomenal young lady as well, who is, um, you know, you guys, uh, I'll, I'll put a photo up and I'll oh, no. just ask. Like you have oh. these beautiful young ones, yeah. right? Now, when we're talking about, in the space of what's been 40 minutes or so, we've gone from when you met, before you met, during the time and how you navigate around each other, like you're now parents, um, where do you guys feed from in order to give so much of yourselves the way that you guys do? I mean, it's always first and foremost because of our relationship with God. That's that's a hundred percent how we're still together. Mm. Like I have no doubt about that at all. Uh, and then because of our relationship, both together as husband and wife, and then separately, uh, we're able to to be better for each other and then be better for our kids. And it's not, it's not perfect and it doesn't always work. Mm. Uh, but I think because we've been together so long, we're able to to check in with each other and go like, is everything okay where you are? Mm. And then we can really break down our personal journeys and then go, okay, well, this is how it's feeding into our kids. You know, and this this needs to change or, mm. or it doesn't, you know, whatever the circumstances. But definitely first and foremost, our relationship with God is a massive part of why we're together mm. or the only reason. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Real, reality check like ballpark figure as well between meeting each other and graduating high school how many times do you guys argue? Uh, well if you count the one this morning um, <laughs> are you just talking about high, up, uh, just high up, up until you graduated high school up until high school uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry I'm big, sorry you, you, you remind me you know of uh, someone I know it's like a uh, do you, when did you argue and like, you know, and it's like, well, well, let me start. Where, where do I start? And I'm just going, okay. <laughs> I mean, all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Once, like, once a week, maybe. A hundred, hundred arguments yeah, during, oh, during high school? If not more, yeah. Yeah. It's funny though, you like, thinking about that number, then you think about what were the reasons? No, no, why no. Were you, you can't like, remember, right? Yeah, exactly. And like, we weren't really going through too much <laughs> for arguments to... Yeah. Happened, but it was just silly stuff, eh? But yeah, yeah over a hundred. Yeah. Every time his home phone died, so I could have called the next day. I yes. got mad about that. Every time he didn't do his cleaning, so we yeah. couldn't catch up. Got mad about that. <laughs> but it's just it's rubbish, really. When you look back. Wow. And, and, and and now. Now. Um, that number's gotten a bit bigger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't, I don't think that you can have two small kids and not fight, or be married and not fight. Yeah. Because you're giving so much of yourself to these two tiny humans who really need so much from you, from both of us. Uh, it's hard to 
to not snap at each other for absolute rubbish. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like we're getting better at navigating what that looks like and how to diffuse the situation and not throw fire on it. What's funny is, is sometimes we'll go like, I don't know, two weeks straight of just no arguing, no bickering. Yeah. Same page, yeah. It's kind of like we realise that at the same time, we're like, we haven't fought in ages. <laughs> Wow. Do you want to fire? Can you pick up your yeah. phone? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a wet towel. It's like, I, I wasn't happy with the way you closed that window. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Sometimes it is that, but then that's when you go, oh, hold on, we're all right. Like, take a step back and realise that the situation is not really anything you need to be arguing about. Mm. But you only, we can't take it out of Nora and Neilani. So, like, we only have each other to to throw that onto sometimes, but it's a bit fun. Mm. Some of them are funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so tell us about how, like, you know, when, when you guys had your little bundles of joy, how was it? Like, you know, because I, I know that people have always said, oh, it's so beautiful, so wonderful, you know, mm. having babies. So yeah. they're just, and, 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 and they're really just setting us up, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I always thought. It's not like. all a lie. Yeah. Like, it is so joyful and so wonderful. It's also so tiring and so it just, it changed our whole life. You know, we went from it just being you and I, yep. like no, only responsibilities to each other. Mm. And then overnight, literally, even when I got pregnant, our whole world changed just from the fact that you know you're having a kid. We were talking about it yesterday, our relationships with our friends had changed for a time because we were the first ones to have a kid like in our immediate friend group as well. So like you just become this person that's like, Oh, you can't come because you're pregnant. Mm. And you, you oh, know. did they make that decision for you? Yeah. I remember that, that was such a frustrating... You don't even get asked. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say no. I'm tired, but, like, ask me. Yeah. You guys went to where it was in? Oh, yeah. how come? Oh, no, we just thought you didn't <laughs> want to come, you know? Literally. <laughs> and so then in turn, like, we got invited to less stuff, so you, you become more alone in that situation. And not in a sad way. We were so excited to have Noah. Mm. But, yeah, your, your whole world starts changing. When they get there, it's better because you're looking at the thing that's stopping you from doing the stuff you loved before. Yeah. But yeah, it is tiring. Mm, yeah. It's joyful, but it is tiring. I am tired. No, no, all of fear enough. I'm just sorry, just touching back on, mm. on just that moment when you were like, you know, also when you were saying, oh, they made that decision for you. Yeah. Right. That, that would have been really heavy. Did yeah. you guys ever have that conversation with each other about, like? But like how you guys or how you felt, especially with you know, like, I guess it'd be a little bit easier for for you because the boys be like, hey, but yeah, you know, exactly. obviously you being you, you wanted to stay mm. and yeah. making sure. But the fact that you said that you know that was yeah, just ask the question. You just, know, yeah, just ask I guess people so don't make any, like a lot of um, uh, soon to be mothers don't make any noise about that moment. Yeah, you know, in between where like your friends don't ask you. Yeah, and they don't so. How did you, how did you... It was, it was really rough because we were coming from a space where we could go and do anything we wanted at any time. Like, yeah. we didn't have to ask anyone. Uh, <laughs> no, don't, 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 nah, no, Shout out to you. Oh, uh, <laughs> shout out to you. <laughs> was that Cody? It was Cody, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, the, it is. They make that decision for you. They don't feel, they just make up your excuse in your head. And it's yeah. like, but I might have felt okay. I yeah. might have wanted to come or at least know that you know, I don't want you to cater what you're doing to me, mm. but maybe just be like, oh, you can't do this, but do you want to catch up for breakfast? Like, I can still, yeah. I can still mm. eat. Yeah. That would have been hard because, you know, you know that they don't intentionally do no, that. It's, but, yeah. it, you know, it, they somewhat just did it because, you know, not out of spite, yeah. not because they were, but, you know, they were just like, oh, because. Yeah. So that would have been even heavier because yeah, you couldn't actually say it. something without sounding like you're whining about. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's the pregnancy's fault that you're yeah. whining about it. Yeah. But yeah, they just don't understand. So I think it was more of like a, I had to turn to Drone and be like, no one wants to hang out with me or, you know, all those emotions that you feel. And then he had to really try and be there for me in that way because I didn't feel like I could say something without looking rude or yeah. then being like, no, we're doing it for you. Well, because you know? like, unless it was something physical, yeah. like, yeah, going to bring those in, <laughs> yeah. you know, like social drinks with friends or stuff like that mm. you know like Taylor's the type of person who doesn't need to be mm. drinking and mm. you know to have a good time with friends like 
she can still be there, yeah. have conversations, and still be really fun. Because, like, there were times where we would go to, like, a birthday or something. You know, everyone's having having a few drinks and that. But, you know, even being pregnant, she can still have a really good time, still be, like, finds a way to be, like, in amongst, you know, the fun and that. So, like, that was a thing. Like, yeah. I don't need... She, Taylor would be like, I don't need to be drinking and getting drunk with you guys to, you know, have a good time. I can still... You know, yeah. can still be there. Like, like even then, socially drinking was, you know, it's not really too big on your radar. So, no. yeah, it was that fact that invite us, give us the choice to yeah. decide if we want to come. Because yeah, yeah, I think we just learnt from that that uh, it's okay to be in a different space than your mates sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then finding the mates that will make space for you yeah. when that happens. And I think now we have a really good. Yeah bond with our like they know who they are yeah. and they will include us in no matter what and then they include our children now which is so dope plus you know? our, our friends are now in our space they're in your space. space they're caught up yeah yeah that's right so but it's interesting how that that, that experience in itself probably you don't think about it too much right yeah. you don't think about it but you now look back at it and you go there was that moment when then your heart compass yeah i love using that term it's one of my favorite terms <laughs> I play heart compass. I used to play heart compass with my kids, but that's another story. Um, so you know, your heart compass then starts to find its true north. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and 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 it may be little to to, to some, but I, I feel like that would have been a turning point. Yeah. As well for the both of you, because in that moment, in that space, you know, the you're happy with like being pregnant. Yeah. But you're also a little bit sad because your friends aren't doing it on purpose. Yeah. But indirectly it's affected how you are and now your heart compass has found like even more so of a true north because you're now jumping in with the not just i'm your husband i'm going to support you it's like i'm your partner and we're going to ride or die yeah you know and it's in that moment when it's a different kind of support right yeah. and, and and i love how that experience starts to mold that true north of yours yeah. and you see now so when you guys now have like friends who are pregnant right you know and then and, and you guys you know you how how you guys approach you know yeah. how do you guys approach them now like i know you guys think they're already in families now but when you yeah. do like you know when you have friends and whatnot do you guys see it in this other space because of that maybe it's mind you to a lot of people yeah. but it, it truly developed another true north for you guys, yeah. heart compass wise. I think it's, uh, we just keep showing up for them yeah. so that they have a different experience in terms of us and our friendship with them, yeah. not in general, but mm. yeah, we just keep showing up for them. Uh, the invites don't stop. And then because we're in that space, yeah. we have our kids, um, it's a bit more catered as well. So like, not only can we do things that they can do being pregnant, yeah. But then we can also be like, now they have their kids, like, come, like, we have everything you're going to need. Yeah. You know, the doors, the doors open and that's so nice to be able to be in a space to do that for people that we love to be around, you know? And that space would be, would be awesome. And I, I bet that space, uh, it's space, special. Um, it, it, it's yeah. wonderful. And then touching on being a mom mm. and how you mentioned your mom yeah. and your relationship and there was that turning point, but then becoming a mom. Oh. Like, like, tell me about that. Tell me about how, just where you are from that moment being a mum, you know, and then your relationships outside of you two. How? She is, shout out, shout out mum. She is so, out, mom. she's so good and she is the best grandma, like, sure I'll get in trouble. She's the best nan. Right. <laughs> Not like, and so watching Not her grandma. with my kids is like such a blessing for me and being a mom now I know the sacrifice that it takes and the time and the mental toll that it takes on you you know because you're, you're together as a couple but I take it upon myself to be the sole organizer of our household as well you know Joan jumps on and he helps me get things done but I've put that responsibility I don't know if it's just I was born that way if it's women but like I'm the sole responsibility, so like I know what it takes and it's hard. And so now I just have this like this bursting love for my mom. I want to be around her all the time. When we're in a room together, I don't even want to play with my kids, I just want to sit with her. Like she's honestly my best friend. And so then watching her be how she is with our kids is so 
special and so rewarding and it just yeah it fills me up and she's always there we're so lucky like that with my mom and then the Fatus as well Joe's mom and dad and aunties whenever the kids are sick there's so many hands to go up to be like we've got them yeah. we've got you covered and like that's such a we know how lucky we are to have that how blessed we have like we are but yeah it's just yeah I love my mom and she's so good I couldn't don't love any woman on the earth like I love my mom now it's the best I love that. And the idea that, like, you know, you know, we have where your kids will never fully understand your love as a parent until they become a parent. Yeah. Right? And then when we become parents, we're like, there it is. Yeah. You know. It's eye opening for you. It it would have been would have been absolutely full for you know, for for you. And then I, I love the fact that, you know, even just before that moment when you were pregnant, mm. there was a turning point and a decision that you made, yeah. you know, with with regards to like, you know, um, you know, when you were with, uh, you know, your, your dad and yeah. whatnot, you know, and, and coming into this and then seeing, you know, your, your wife, you want to be a dad, you know, where did you, like, how was your heart compass, you know? How was that, you know, gauge going for you? Like, you know, there would have been so many things going on in, in, in your world, you know, you know, on top of the love of the love. Like, tell me about, tell me about how, tell us about how, like, your, how you, you know, yeah, look, navigated yeah. through. Yeah, it's, um, it, it does, like you said, it's eye-opening. And, you know, you really learn about what, I guess what like what it means to wake up put your work boots on Mm. get in the car get to work because you're not now only having to provide you know the the food or whatever or the roof just over us two like you've now got a, a, a child who depends on you as well so you just work harder you work harder you you work harder on your relationship because you know I had this really cool um, depiction of like what parents are right and knowing <clears throat> knowing what Taylor's background was and I mean like that's a shout out to Karen she, she carried a family on her own and I wanted to like show Taylor as well like we can we can do that together as as mum and dad and that, you know, try and show my dad to be a role model for my children the way that my dad is. And, and seeing that, like, okay, I know now why dad worked hard for us every day. I know why dad decided to move a whole nother country because of how much he loved his family, how much he loved his children. And kind of taking up that mantle myself was was and is something that you know I, I'm constantly reminding myself of and um, yeah just like learning that that's what that's what my parents yeah. were doing and like same thing okay like because you know like it wasn't always easy like yeah mum and dad would say you can't do this you can't do that you know you can't go to these parties or you can't go out with your friends at this time because you haven't done what you were meant to do whether it be chores or whatever um but you know they were trying to set me up and you know trying to give me some life lessons on how things are and now I can see why and you know I'll implement that with our kids as well um but yeah it just it changes everything yeah yeah and then on that note right you had an idea how did you have an idea on how you were going to parent? And how do you look at that now with mm-hmm. now being parents? Has it changed? Like, you know, the idea of like, man, I, I would never scold, <laughs> I would never like, you know, tell my kids off like, you know, like with this rage. <laughs> so tell us, to, 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 to tell, tell us about how like, you know, that versus reality on how you guys are seeing or are you guys like you know what I had a plan and I'm sticking to it is that what's your that's 
funny too. Is, I don't know if you remember, but we did the marriage counselling before we got married. And it was a few weeks of covering like hard, uh, hard questions about what might happen when you get married, right? And one of them was smacking your kids. And I remember both of us were like, yep. Like, no hesitation, because <laughs> we both had been, you know, raised yeah. that way. Yeah, we're disciplined that way. So. Yeah. And so it was funny that we never even thought about that kind of stuff until we had Noah. But uh, I think that some of it stayed, uh, some of it. But I think uh, as you get to know your kids more and what they respond to. Yeah, that's true. Like, you know, I feel like we were a bit harder on Noah because he's our first baby. And, you know, you want him yeah. to be respectful when we go to places. Uh, and then as he grew up, he didn't respond to some of the stuff that we thought, like, he didn't respond to being put in, like, time out or being, like, yelled at. But he responded to being like, hey, this is why this might not, like, work. And this is why, you know, he's a bit more emotional, just wanted a bit more love in the way that he mm. did things. So, yeah, I think as we get to know our kids, we're changing. Yeah. But parenting is, like, you have to constantly adapt, just yeah. almost immediately to what they're, not to what they want, because you're the boss. Yeah. But to to what they're going to respond to, otherwise it's just not going to work. Oh, yeah. Mm. And you're sticking to your guns secretly deep in your heart. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, you know, like, like that's like, like you said, adapting, you know, whatever the scenario is, if he's having a tantrum because he's not getting something that he wants, mm. um, we try and play that as it comes. So sometimes yeah talking to him and he just wants to more so like have a conversation about it um other times if it's just like he's like screaming and he's going crazy and kind of come down just my voice sometimes is enough to yeah big voice yeah yeah enough for him to be like okay yeah Yeah. i've got that sweet dad and then you know he'll go to mum and he'll apologize and stuff like that you know but sometimes a little love tap you know helps Mm. but it's yeah. just, yeah, as it comes, we'll play it out, sort of a thing. You never know what you're going to get either. Like, I knew before having kids that kids had tantrums because they were tired, hungry. No, I had a tantrum not that long ago. It's still fresh in my brain. Because we, you know, an up and go, the pop-up. <laughs> yes. Stay with me. He got, he had like a three, 30 minute tantrum, I reckon, because we put the straw in it for him. Okay. He wanted to do it himself, mm. and it was the last <laughs> up and go, so we couldn't like restart this. And it was like I just stood there, be like, "Oh no, like this is real life. This is happening to us." So like, you can't think what's gonna happen. Because yeah. you know that's the type of kid Noah is. He's like he is an independent kid. Yeah. He likes to do things himself. Yeah. But yeah, an up and go, an up and said. go thing. Like we didn't think it was gonna come to that. It's like really? Yeah. <laughs> really. I would because have been like, oh no, I didn't really, put, like, you can still, oh, if you close your eyes. <laughs> it was so bad. Joe was like, I'm going to the shop, I'm buying a new one, because yeah. it's late too, so like, we're turning on each other now, <laughs> everyone's yelling, like, oh, not good. <laughs> Funny though, but not good. <laughs> but that, like, did that part and parcel, right? Part and parcel, mm. so just, you know, with, with the kids. I, I, I like that. So, <laughs> so we just, you know, speaking of arguments, um, they reckon right up there with um, with moving house being a, a major stressor in life is um, planning for one of these. Like that there is your wedding day. Yeah. That's pre children and um, post high school. <laughs> Tell us about the day. What can you remember? Was it a a blur? I still have. I mean, I still can't remember bits and pieces of my marriage and wedding, except for that bit that I shared about my mother. But, um, which, you know, mum, honestly, it was good stuff, mum. Shout out to mum. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to mum. <laughs> Just, uh, but tell us about that. Uh, I remember the whole day up until we were sitting in front of everyone at the bridal table, and then all of a sudden, like, the rest of the night after that was, like, blank, because they got nervous. Like, <laughs> when we don't really like being the centre of any kind of attention and so like we just kind of stood there I remember looking at Jerome like after we got married we were sitting there and I said oh I don't want to be up here like this is so scary yeah but it was such a beautiful day honestly yeah yeah it was it was um like yeah finally you come to the day I don't know we got engaged a year year, right so it took us a year to plan everything and and get sorted yeah the saving part but yeah 
and then it's it's over pretty quickly but you you have those like slow motion moments throughout the night yeah. where you kind of mm. you get to stop you're seeing so what was one of those slow motion moments for you? it was um what's it called after the formalities and everyone's on the floor dancing um you're seeing people that you know like you try and invite people to your wedding like you don't want to just invite family and friends like what i did was we look at um different people throughout your life that yeah. have made impacts on you as well so seeing um family friends that were i don't know big role models to you at a certain aspect when you're a child mm. seeing them hang like chatting to people from at that point like presently yeah. it was cool to see that but just stopping and just watching everyone having a good time and you know feeling like really on a day that everyone's yeah. there because they want to celebrate us um, so blessed to have all the people you love in one space yeah you know that's so great. feeling responsible for their interaction yeah please have a good time it's like yeah have, oh, they're having a great time that's because of us huh? <laughs> <laughs> so see that that's us so, so the whole year of planning and saving it was worth it, it was worth see it. that yeah, yeah, yeah we got married <laughs> well that's it right it's like yeah we got married too but <laughs> everybody is just there yeah. and yeah. they're interacting and some of them haven't seen each other for years yeah exactly and that's because of us. Mm. Good. <laughs> Take responsibility for your actions, guys. You know, so we roll with that. Oh, that's awesome. So that's one of those, you know, um, the moments, like with weddings are massive, man. Yeah. And one of the hardest things is knowing who you can't mm. invite. Yeah. Right? You know, that, that is probably one of the most stressing things yeah. because, you know, seeing my, seeing how my wife was, you know, everything else kind of kind of falls into place right like you know you have you know the people i mean other people like you have what where you want to do it how you want to do it what you're going to do but it's the ones that you can't right and you guys would have went through i have like 10 people in my whole family <laughs> it's jerome's a thousand people guest list that was rough i stayed out of it and i just said uh, his mom was so good. She was like, "This is the number of people that that we can have," and I'm pretty sure you and your mom did the whole thing because I don't know anyone. Okay, so you were got off lightly. Yeah, I one. did one. Uh, I invited my ten people, <laughs> yeah. and we invited our friends, and then I left it to Joe and Philly to nut out the family side of things, so, so I could take note. <laughs> how did you? How did you get? Like you know, obviously, mom would have been like you know, this one, this one, this yeah. one. You know, did you like you know? Because you guys really have a set list of how many you can, right? Yeah, and then yeah, exactly. Had a number we had to try and like whittle down to. So yeah, I think it's the same. It's that same thing. Like I guess with our culture, right? Yeah, you can have like three hundred people yeah. at a wedding, and it's just basically you you invite everyone that has a connection to you, but. Financially, we're we're just out of high school, like held high school for a few years, into our jobs and stuff. So yeah. like, yeah, we couldn't have three hundred people. But um, it was the same thing. It was who who has had like an impact yeah. on my life, um, and who will have one on Taylor's life once she meets them. And um, yeah, like looking back at it, I'm I'm glad, and I didn't. We didn't invite anyone just for like the sake of the sake of it yeah. you know we had people there that we want like wanted them to be there okay you know and um yeah no it was well we had like still it was, it was like, like 120 yeah wow wow yeah so it was just on the top of like top of our budget but it was perfect really at the end of the day yeah and i think only a few people didn't make it on the day so yeah yeah those good. people yeah <laughs> just um i think I don't think we had an opportunity to talk about your culture because you, do we? Even, we asked Taylor what her culture and heritage was, and then we yeah. got sidetracked. Yeah, something. look, I don't know. It's hard. To what? Go tell us. Ever. Tell us about. Tell us about your heritage, your makeup, your ethnicity, and so um, basically, uh, Maori on my dad's side, and then Maori on my mum's side, but she was far right into a Tukalaan family. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah, and that's where she grew up in Porirua. Mm. Um So yeah, like, you know, you can go into the whole specifics of like 
the mm. blood and the DNA, mm. but I call myself, yeah, took allowing in Māori. Um, oh. And then, yeah, there's like throwbacks to, I think there's someone who's German on my dad's side and mm. stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, so, and I didn't learn about my toke side like heavy until we moved to Sydney because that was all the family in Sydney mm. with the took allowance side from my mum's family. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I didn't really learn much about that until we moved to Sydney. So that's where like learned about going to Luku and you know all of the different festivities and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, that was I'm I'm really fortunate for that and um, yeah, big family there. But yeah, that's Wellington has a massive um, Tukalau community, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've, like you know, I'm not. I'm not full key, but yeah, that's what I've heard too. It's mm. real big there. When when we looked, I, did you ever live there, Joe? In in Wellington? No, no, no. I've, I've only I'm a sightseer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had, and it was it was really strange. I didn't know they were called talk, talk allowance. I just knew that when they spoke, it was like a a weird Samoan. Yeah. Like because <laughs> they're just uh, oh, just just for you talk alone out there. It's not weird. So no, no, sorry, it's, sorry. It's, um, I mean, from my uh, perspective, okay. it's close to yeah, Samoan. All my quite love friends. Sorry, sorry about that. But yeah, it was like for me as a youngster when I was about four or five, listening to my neighbours who were talk alone and the elderly. They would speak to me, and I, I was just like, I could understand. It was just like a few, few um, letters replacing things like apostrophes, and yeah. that was really fine. I didn't realise there was a thing called yeah, um, right. Took allow and yeah, yeah, yeah. When my, I think it was, I was like five or six when Mum like fully explained what that all meant to me, mm-hmm. and like obviously still as a five six year old, like it didn't really connect until yeah. I was a bit older. The whole aspect of like it was the same with my dad; he was far to his grandparents, so wow. Wow. learning that. You know, my dad will talk about his dad and his mum was really my my great grandparents. You know, because obviously my family didn't do that with us; we all wow. stayed together. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So learning how all of that works, and I I don't think it fully like I fully understood it until like the last five or six years. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, sadly I didn't get to meet my granddad, my mum's dad, um, because I heard he was like just old school. Staunch took a lawn fella, eh? Mm. Had broken English. Um, you know, didn't mess with him. He was pretty, yeah, straightforward yeah. fella. If anything happened to mum or yeah. my auntie, he was there <laughs> with his lava yeah. lava, his jandals, um, ready to step anyone out. Yeah. I mean, just picture that too. Holy hell. It's nothing scary than like, you know, a guy walking towards you with the ear on it, you know, and yeah. he's just looking you dead. Especially if he's walking and and mid stride, he starts to readjust his. Yeah, when, you know, when you're readjusting you know it, he's, he's in you're for like, the long haul. oh, yeah, okay, he's tightening it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't he, fall while he's. He plans you. to be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to beat the spanks off me. Anyway, um, so just based on that, like, there are obviously. The spanks? Some, <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I, would, I, like I wanted to work with him. My bad. Um, Spanks. That's a nice word if you say it. Um, the spanks off me. I've got a video to show. And um, like I said before, we're having some trouble with the audio. But uh, And I'll ask some questions in the back of this video. It's not as, it's not a video of you guys. I'm, oh, I, I haven't dug around that badly. Like to, this is like last minute. But I was thinking about your cultural differences. New Zealand, uh, Australian. Mm-hmm. Has some ties to New Zealand, but... Um, <laughs> Someone, I remember a kid would snort sherbet oh. just for fun, and I was like, That's dangerous. How is that fun though? I know. How is that fun know, though? You know, you kids know. trying to show off and stuff, but I was like, Watching him, I was like, Bro, your brain's <laughs> melting right now because of this sherbet. It's like, Punch me in the nose <laughs> just for fun, just for fun. Mm, so, just on the back of that video, yes. Stella, do you have any? Um, any memories or anything you want to share about uh, Kiwiisms and sort of adopting or, be, or becoming assimilated to some of the Kiwi uh, traditions that you never knew existed prior to meeting Jerome and you thought was weird at some stage <laughs> and then became accustomed to it and now you love them or... Um, or just detest them. Detest them quietly Yeah. in your right. time. And you see sometimes. Are there specific foods? <laughs> Are there specific <laughs> foods that they eat? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> Someone. Pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty because I was, we, met, we met so young, right? So they were Joe's family is such a massive influence on me. I got to see firsthand what their culture was like and all the things that they didn't enjoy. Most of it, I feel like I was pretty. Um, didn't think it was strange or anything. Like I love Hungy. I tried that only because of Jerome's family. Mm. Um, I don't that love Boiler. The first time you met my parents, yeah, hey, we, had a, we had a Hungy at yeah. home. And I was so, and I had never seen that before. And so I was just like, oh, this isn't like roast vegetables. Like, that's as close as I got, like roast vegetables into me. And I was like, ah, why was it in the ground? Ah, I don't know what's happening. Uh, and I was mean. And now that I've been around them for so long, I understand why they do it and how cool it is. So, yeah, I don't love a boiler. It's just not my thing. But I would like um, to think that I'm respectful about it, you know? Well, let's, let's pretend like no one's watching. <laughs> don't. Look, <laughs> what? Is you it are texture? an Is it texture fan. or flavour? Is it, is it... Look, I'm not... Is it... It's a... It's preparation? It's a thing. I don't feel like... Oh, I don't know, guys. This feels dangerous. <laughs> no, you... It you might know, serve you, to, like... You do know that's what you're saying. Better the experience it's, it's, uh, for you in the future. going through the same thing as you, <laughs> and you can say how they feel. <laughs> I think it was a texture thing for me with the meat. I can okay. tell you, boiled potatoes, boiled veggies, that's all, like, relatively normal Australian type thing. Yeah. But I think it's the, the meat, and then uh, the type of meat isn't my buzz either. But... Yeah, I just can't, I can't see it and go, oh, I really want to eat that or try that. Yeah. Mm. But, but that's okay. No, it's okay. I like okay. fried bread, so I'll have the fried bread that's yeah. been cooked up and I'll have that. But yeah, I just, it's just not my buzz. But that's probably the only thing that I'm a bit Seafood? Like. Oh, no. Nah. Not you like kinna? No, oh, but. so that's not the only thing. So it's yeah, not the sorry. only thing. <laughs> Let's make a list. But we did go to Fiji and um, we were all together. So Joe's whole family, aunties and uncles, and we were, they were fishing for kinners in the, in the ocean. Yeah. Because that's a thing. And then they found some and they're like, Taylor, you have to try it. I'm under pressure now because it's just me versus everybody else. And I tried it and man, that was not good. No. <laughs> Though, guys... Did, 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 did you take did you take that moment to go, well he did sacrifice his yeah, caramel. I'd rather have caramel for the rest of my life. It's just not the same sacrifice. He did sacrifice the caramel, so I'm just gonna smile and wave and go, This was delicious. I tried it and I felt like that was enough to be like for everyone to go, okay, good. You know, right. you know what's unfair about that whole situation? Do tell, well, do tell. Is um we didn't realise until one of my aunties she ate like because it was like the locals were fishing and they and one of the aunties spotted the kinna bag straight away oh, and yeah, like, yeah. so we went over and gave them some money and they said you can have the whole bag oh, wow. auntie smashed like four or five of them and then her lips started to swell up oh, auntie. <laughs> and then um, I think mum was like my tongue feels numb my lips feel numb and then uh, we grabbed the, um, the lady that had the, that had caught them and she was like, oh, yeah, you have to wash wash it out first. It was like sea lice oh. <laughs> that went inside the kids. Oh. And they were, they had like a reaction to everyone. And so Taylor was like, oh, I'm definitely happy I didn't eat them because everyone else's lips started yeah. swelling up. Because they were just, and there were so many. So they were just pulling them up, have, chucking them back. Okay. I tried that one and I was like, no, I'm out. All right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise I feel like we meshed, I meshed in well pretty quick anyway. And I probably enjoy more Kiwi stuff than yeah? Jerome sometimes. A bit more hoary than Jerome sometimes, so. Yeah. Mm. I want to okay. say too, like, you know, met your mum for the first time. We had a good chat. But, yeah, when mum and dad saw Taylor devouring this hangi, they were like, <laughs> son. Good keeper. Yeah, a keeper. pretty much. She's a keeper. Because wow. that was yeah. like mum's thing was... If the food comes out and she doesn't eat anything, like, but Taylor yeah. was like, no, this is yum. And yeah, I think that was a good, that was a good first impression. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> well done. I was least... hungry. It's a funny thing, eh? Good like, work. Parents are like, Tell her not to eat the whole day and just go, come on over. <laughs> You're not allowed to eat, just come on over. Yeah. All right? And don't tell mum that you like anything. <laughs> but you can tell a lot from the way someone eats. Hey, no. <laughs> Like, no, seriously, and I think... I believe you. Yeah. I laugh because, yeah. Do they breathe? My wife still looks at me funny when I eat. <laughs> it's like, you know. <laughs> they breathe. 
<laughs> it's a snort, eh? Hey? It's a snort while you're... Right? Wait, yeah. Did I just... Yeah. No one started to eat with no hands lately. I don't know where that's come from. But he now I was like, oh, I just want to eat it just my face. And I'm just looking to like devour the cereal with no hands. You might want to pretend like you're leaving the house and then just like go and then see how his dad is actually going. <laughs> <laughs> do, it, do, it, do it like this. Do it like this. <laughs> He's getting it from somewhere. Mm. <laughs> Press your lips like a straw. You can do it. Um, just, uh, yeah, just a few other questions. Um, I don't know. We're about an hour and a half in. I don't know if um, anyone's still watching. But, uh, yeah, just a few questions to sort of tie things up. And then we'll edit it later. And you can let me know what we can or can't keep. Um, hardships. Life side chips now, um, man. I probably should have prefaced this better leading up to it, but um, talk about talk about it. I mean, let's talk about your bro, um, Jerome. Mm-hmm. And uh, not many people would, but I, I think I think the lens by which you will have a look at this situation is obviously however you want to look at it, but also with the um, thought that there may be people watching this who have gone through loss. Now, I've I've never experienced such a loss, and I'm yet I still have my parents. I still have my well, no, I don't have my grandparents, but I wasn't ever as close to them as I yeah. probably have heard others uh, whose lives have been enriched by relationship with the grandparents should be. Um, tell us about tell us about that. Tell us about loss, like. Your brother passed away, yeah. and um, and how you've navigated that space for you, your family, your parents, your siblings. How, uh, you know, go as far as you want to, but uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um. Yeah. So, in uh, yeah, twenty nineteen, uh, lost my brother, mm. and um, you know, sadly, it was in a it was in a real tragic way, and. Um, I think for me, because you know, I f- found out via phone call from my dad, and um, yeah, just that instant initial finding out was like, like the hardest thing I've ever had to hear, ever felt. Um, felt like, felt like my world was just like literally just giving way around me and like I still remember that initial feeling like so clearly um because yeah that was hard like inside into my brother there's only three years between us and you know three years apart when you're like children it's a pretty big age gap you know like a five-year-old and an eight-year-old you're going through different things but when he hit that like 17 year old age man that's when we really became really bonded Mm -hmm. so at that point he was 20 when he passed away and we were so close like we spoke Mm -hmm. to each other daily texted him all the time um so yeah it was a massive loss and the whole you know, the hard thing about that year is like it was the same year my son was born. So we had just had Noah. He was only, what, January to August. He was only like... Eight months? Yes, eight months. Seven and months. it's just a tough time to remember, but it is, there's so much beautiful mm-hmm. uh, memories in that as well. You know, seeing my brother be able to spend time with his nephew, like that moment was special for me. Mm-hmm. And quite absolutely love Noah Mm. and um, yeah so like dealing with the loss of him was really really hard for that first like year it was like real hard like it was hard to not break down thinking about him and thinking about that time Uh, but during the whole you know the funeral part and the, it was the it was the month after when you're trying to get back into life, you mm-hmm. know, because I feel like in that time we put everything on pause. We just wanted to yeah. spend the time as a family, yeah, be together, be together, 
Um, another beautiful moment was my auntie um, had planned their wedding in Rarotonga. Mm. And I feel like any other family would just not even decide to go and just stay here and be sad. But we thought, no, nah, let's go and let's go and spend some time as a family healing in a beautiful in paradise mm. and celebrate someone's you know marriage because we know what marriage means and how important that is and you know he was obviously meant to be going on that trip too um but yeah it was it was the month two months after that once we were all back into you know everyday life trying to get back into work um but just throughout it all we just kept reminding each other that as hard and as as sad as it is not having with him physically having him with us physically like we knew where he was we knew he was um and this is your your faith this yeah, is where your faith exactly. takes our, our faith just as a family just like it doubled tripled mm. it was crazy what that meant for everyone mm. and yeah without having god to lean on during that time i don't think our family would have been able to come out to the end of it as well as we have mm-hmm. um, because you know in ha- hand in hand with the loss of him God gained him mm. in heaven so like having those two working together just for me it helped yeah like so much and yeah. I know that it was the same for my parents and yeah um, but yeah I think it was just a time where we became closer as a family instead of pushing each other out and trying to isolate. Mm. It was our time to always check up on each other. Taylor was amazing during that time because, mm. like, they worked together. Yeah, I was going to just segue yeah, there for wow. a second because yeah. wow. Taylor, you, you're as much a part of this. Um, so Jerome sort of shared his initial reaction to the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're someone who's been part of this family since you were 13, 14. Yeah. Uh, so you you have this established relationship not only with Jerome but his family and mm-hmm. Quaid is very much a part of that. Yeah. Um, he's yeah he's a he's a coworker he's family. Tell us tell us initially what was going through your mind when when this all went down. I think um, I just you you go into a state of a bit of like uh, disbelief I think and mm-hmm. you don't uh, you know you're hearing what's happening you're seeing what's going on but you're not able to make any actual decisions on what you should be doing in that exact moment. Uh, our first reaction is I was trying to figure out how I could get Jerome into a safe area. You know, we were in our bedroom when it happened, it was the middle of the night, and he was obviously going through the emotions, so my biggest thing was, okay, our son's there, how do we get from where we are to where we need to go, which is his family's place, so that we can be together. Because, yeah, you're just in this constant state of, like, I don't know what I'm doing and this this can't be real, I suppose, is where you're at, is where I was. Uh, we were living with my mum and dad at the time, which was such a blessing. And I just remember knocking on their door, trying to speak, but, like, you don't want to say anything because it's, mm. it's not real to you. Yeah. Uh, and I remember saying, like, we have to go. Can you take care of Noah? You know, and without question, everything for them stopped as well and they just like go be where you need to be do you need to take you uh and i think it was just uh once we got off the road the drive there that was just the most surreal drive of my life Mm -hmm. because i'm driving because i'm trying to be strong for my husband Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to not i'm trying to understand i'm trying to come to terms and at the same time i'm trying to just get us to where we need to go safely uh it was just, it was just too, the whole thing is surreal, mm. you know, and I just, you wouldn't, you can't wish it on anyone, you don't wish anything like this to happen to anybody at the same time, all you're wishing for is it to not be happening to you in the moment, uh, and I just think getting to his family's place is where we felt safe, because we were able to just breathe and be in that state of uh, being upset and mourning, but doing it together was just... You know, I don't have a big family. I've never experienced that kind of love. And it was just, I think, yeah, it was a safe place when we were able to get there. That was my biggest concern, is just to be around our family. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Now, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll fast forward, yeah, six months later to a year. How have you guys, and even to now, what, what journey 
have you undertaken either individually or together or what are some things that you can speak to that would that helped you during you know since then uh, in terms of navigating the the grief space what 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 things can you help or share with others that would help them or anybody else who's who's watching this get through what might be a little bit fresher than what you guys have been through and um and, and if you want to talk to, to other parts of it as well, um, and I know mum and dad's a massive part of that mm. for, for you, Jerome, and, and your siblings as well. Yeah. Like uh, being so many of you, um, well, I would say so many of you, being above the average family number, <laughs> um, you've got now an awareness of, of so many perspectives and lives that still need to move forward and you know, like it's it's very much like a I don't I don't know if if this speaks to the situation accurately, but it's very much a, let's not leave anybody behind, mm. both mentally, emotionally, yeah. um, physically, and um, and and make sure that they, they they're with us on this journey. Um, what, what 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 have you guys done like since then, and what have you found has helped? What is what have you found doesn't really help? And have you even talked to people's you know? Um, even people's stupidity, like, you know, like around what, oh, I don't know, you know, humans, are, we all make mistakes. We all, we're all stupid with this situations where you find yourself putting your foot in your mouth. Um, what could you say to those who are watching who may know somebody who's had great loss? <laughs> you know, don't say it. Don't, just don't do it. Don't say it. Don't go there. Just be pre- like whatever you yeah. found is helpful. But you know, I'm, 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 I'm that person that puts you know, feet in, <laughs> in mouth all the time. So pretend you're talking to me straight away. Go, go, Joe, this is what not to do, if you guys feel like. Yeah, what can you share? What can you share? Can I share? Um, look, it's, it's hard because, like, what we've done as a family is we haven't made talking about Quaid like a subject that doesn't get brought up. Mm. We all talk about Quay often. All the time, yeah. All the time. Whether it be, oh, Quay would have loved that, or Quaid's, you know, remember when Quaid did this or did that? Um, you know, you know, or whether it be mum and dad posting up a memory of him on Facebook, like they do that regularly. So I think when someone might say something that's a bit insensitive, like, mm. We've just learnt that I don't know some some people just might not be emotionally like connected. Yeah, connected yeah. or mature in that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So I I will never hold something against someone, mm. but I think it's just like learning how to read the, the situation. Yeah, and just thinking about it. You know, like yeah. personally, I think. I can't say it's happened to me yet. Like no one has ever said something Mm. you know but if someone was like yeah just think about it yeah before you you know you say something like really think is this is something that i'm about to say is it gonna help that person if not maybe i just should keep it to myself or you know um but yeah for for us i think what's helped is we've kept quaid very much in like our everyday conversation yeah 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 mm. exactly um and i think you know we like i'll check up on taylor she'll check up on me because you can kind of know hey yeah i think both of us because uh, grief hits you at different spaces too like there are harder days than other days and where your heart feels heavier or you know your mind is wondering and you just it hits you at different spots and most of the time it's never at the same time we never get to go through that which I think is a blessing because we're able to go, hey, you're all right. Or like even watching videos that then pull on your heartstrings. It's got mm-hmm. nothing to do with you, but then you're relating it to your own experience or something that we don't get anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about stopping what we're doing and just being in that moment for each other. Mm-hmm. Because the stuff that we had planned or whatever was happening can wait. Yeah. Because right now we need to stop and we need to be in this moment mm-hmm. and be there for each other because otherwise you bottle that up. And then weeks and months go by and you, you know, you stop being able to let your grief out. 
And I think that that's something that we've really done for each other. It's just shown up on those really hard, hard moments. You know, when you hear a song or whatever, whatever the trigger is, mm -hmm. just yeah. stop what you're doing and be in that moment until you're able to stand back up and go again. Mm -hmm. Everything else can just wait. Mm -hmm. How has um, and I man, I hear you, Karen, and I probably want to give a, a lot more time to this uh, the um, I guess the advent of, of social media allows people to think that they can just say what they want to say put it out there and and not use the filter of common sense to refrain from making stupid comments yeah. mm. or making things about themselves so like, I know dad posts a lot about yeah. about Queen and I often wonder like and you know, I've, I've thought about this like it's a it's a great space to do that sort of stuff and be therapeutic. It can be therapeutic in a way. Mm. I, I definitely hear Dad when he's posting that this is more him than for anybody's eyes yeah. to see. Yeah. Mm. And then <laughs> you see certain things posted that you just go, "Hey, come on! Like this wasn't even about you. Let the man grieve and process what he needs to process." Yeah. Instead of making flippant comments, like and I and I am ashamed of this because uh, you guys know I'm Christian and um, and like the circles, even in Christian circles, uh, and I'm not going after Christians, all right? Just don't. <laughs> right. If you want to be a keyboard warrior, <laughs> you can leave a comment if you want. Yeah. Um, but that's that's up to you. I, I just think sometimes, yeah, we're not as um, responsible as Christians the whole you know me I hate the space of I'll just pray mm. I'll just have some faith oh you don't have enough and I hate yeah. I hate that sort of thing I, I think it's unloving and I think it's I think it leaves a lot to be desired by the person who, whom you're saying that to like yeah. and, I, and I think sometimes in in spaces where there's grief um man there are some experts that aren't experts yeah, about exactly. grief who step into that space and end up causing more damage not only for the person who's posted it but for the rest of us mm -hmm. who understand progress over perfection and are trying to live day by day like by the grace of God like um, but yeah I, I hear what you're saying and I love what you're saying Taylor in terms of being at, like having the, having the blessing of, of being in those moments at separate times in order for one another to be there for one another you know that's um, that's really um, that's really massive but um, man, I'm long-winded. Hold on, I forgot what I was about to say because I was no, thinking no, how I've, good that was. No, no, I, I agree wholeheartedly that there, there was, you know, it's it, it's people will go, you know, it's simple, you know, have faith. Oh man, yeah. you know, keep the faith. You know, I'm sorry, this is foot and mouth. This is my foot and mouth moment, I think. But disclaimer alert, like you know, every time I see something like that. I no longer feel bad about thinking out loud and saying, you know, shut up. <laughs> you know, you I know, just want to throw someone. Like, honestly, yeah, like yeah. straight what does up. It mean? Look, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not practicing. You know, um, uh, but you know, I, I see stuff like that, and it it, it really irks me. Yeah. Right, you know, just to, but it's but it's good to hear. You know, when you have someone um, as young as yourselves. You know, and, and your approach is, hey, you know what, um, you know, when, you, when people, you know, say stuff like that, you know, don't hold it against them, mm. you know, that, you know, don't hold their stupidity against them. Yeah. You know, it's a, uh, I, I like that approach, you know, and it's because you're not going, ah, oh, you know, you're, you're the kid. You're just going, oh, I'm not going to be about trying to acknowledge anything other than the fact that we are who we are and we're just going to do what we're going to do so that, that, that I've rolled with that you know but yeah that um, that real <sighs> keep the faith thing yeah. look look up the wires though because up the wires keep the faith anyway you know? but anyway but, couple, um, but, <laughs> couple of words to yeah. describe Queen from both of you uh, probably four or five words <laughs> go on so, <laughs> I love that I love that we now call the haircut up the wires that's so appropriate. To describe Quay from from our relationship, yeah, yeah, he he bro, yeah, he is so cheeky, always 
always getting at me for something, especially in the family chat. Oh, yeah. Good job, Clay. Uh, he's handsome, he's kind, he's respectful, and he's a hard worker. And I got to see that firsthand, and I love that for me. Yeah. Um, for his and my relationship. I, I remember saying to my boss, oh, can you, can you hire my, my husband's brother? And she was like, we'll make a job for him. And then, like, I think, like, two weeks after he started, they were like, he's the hardest worker we've ever had. They mm. started getting more hours than me. I was like, cool, oh, yay. <laughs> Yeah, just Taking your hours work. now. Yeah, <laughs> Taking your breath. It's too good. Come on. <laughs> Old Quayley. Um, he's wise, man. For a young fella, bro, he was very switched on in all aspects, whether it be, yeah, emotionally, whether it be, um, like, like book smart. He was, like, he was the only one out of, of so far anyways, but, like, he made it to uni decided uni wasn't for him like he was going to go through business and then ended up in philosophy at a at another like sort of university wow. yeah learning philosophy and um yeah so super wise um he was tough bro. he was a strong dude like you know when you have a little brother and they get <laughs> to that point where you won't i'll never i would never have told him but he could easily like like he could easily take me if if he wanted to because he was just got hype from I don't know where. I know the feeling. Born like he was had a six pack at like five years old. Yeah. And uh, but yeah. Who does that? Exactly. <laughs> but just a, like strong, strong like, and he's an he's an athlete, so like strong on the b ball court. But he's a strong dude, and um, yeah, like you said, like being cheeky, but he was funny as so. Mm. Yeah, he used to crack me up all the time. But, um, yeah, that was quite... He was, eh? He was Um, pretty smart. Yeah. Like, he'd say some things that I would have to walk away and go, and it would drop later on. (laughs) (laughs) He's right. (laughs) Like, you know. But he would say some things that if I repeated right now, we probably wouldn't be able to... (laughs) Yeah, the episode said... Well, you know, talking... Like, that's the other thing, too, talking about how people need to think about what they say before Mm. they say it. And, and my aspect is, if they're just not mature enough and that's what they want to say, then let them go on their tangent. But Quaid was the opposite. Mm, yeah. He would be the one calling you out on social media. Yeah. He was, I used to always like, you know, when you were on, um, like your notification comes up and it's like, Quaid has commented on this. I would follow the trace <laughs> man and he's going at all these people for all sorts of things with like, whether it was politics, whether it was immigration laws, oh, yeah, like- whether it was... I don't know all sorts of things mm. he was always in on it hey and um <laughs> yeah that was him on that set and the other thing too is he was trendy trendy as he was hey yeah. Yeah. like from a young age he was like you know you would see him mm. rock these sneakers or this clothes man then, it had been 20 years since I seen a turtleneck on anybody <laughs> and then I saw Quaid with one and it was was it a black no was it a black one black no, one yeah, it was yeah. a black one mm. you mean the, the the turtleneck with the chain Oh no! No! Oh, <laughs> did he ever wear a chain? I don't think not with the turtleneck. Mm. He didn't chuck the rock. The rock the, the chain. It's <laughs> all like I was thinking. <laughs> all right, I'd like to see this. You know, that would be <laughs> like Ryan Popper. Um, Fun fact: when when I asked you guys to come to the podcast, I bought a I bought a turtleneck. <laughs> I bought a black turtleneck. So I thought, oh, I'm pretty sure. Anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know why you didn't wear it. it I'll, take, I'll wear it on my dates. If, my I, if I if I had seen you with your turtleneck, man, I would have brought that gold chain out of the car. Man, and you would have had to wear it. But it's it. not quite a turtleneck anymore. They don't make them like like long enough to roll back down. Nah, it's maybe my knickers. It's, nah, it's because <laughs> you don't have a neck. My knickers. Your shoulders touch your head. You no, don't have a neck. No neck. Oh, that's it's, what they used to call those, me. Those damn like shoulders no of yours, bro. Soft they, hands and gone no and hidden your neck but like mm. I agree with you like with my little brother I gotta say I hype myself up by saying okay I'm the prototype yeah he's just the finished product <laughs> <laughs> right like okay like so so yeah. so like that's how I like to do it you know because yes. you know my, my, my little brother you know, so the blues taller we'll lose mate <laughs> yeah, we, run out of we time. simply run out of time <laughs> <laughs> so the blues have never lost and neither have the never chickens. up the chookies but yeah, prototype. I <laughs> roll with that. Yeah. I want to roll with that. So my, my, my brother, taller, faster, stronger, better looking. Right. So yeah, um, I'll call you Mr. Prototype. <laughs> Just like me. Yeah. How long has it been <laughs> since Quaid's passing? Well, 
years. Four years. Yeah. Wow. Four years. Yeah, coming up, end of this month. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. December twenty eighth. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. What is what's what's with the immediate future for you guys? If the school is planned for us to have more children, then we will be open to that if it happens. If we can have it our way, we are so happy with two tiny children and pretty keen to not grow that anymore. (laughs) We just could use a good night's sleep and I think that we all enjoy each other's company so much. Uh, Even when we had Noah, everyone's... uh, Everyone's question when you get married is, oh, when are you having kids? When are you having kids? Mm -hmm. And then you have one, and they're like, when's the next one? And you're like, bro, I just had this one. Uh, And we really enjoyed our three years, uh, just us and him. That was really special. And so now we're just starting to really enjoy that space of having, you know, a little toddler now, matched Mm -hmm. with a four-year-old. Those two going up against each other is hectic. Um, So, yeah, not looking at having any more kids. I think... um, we're in a space where we're to take some holidays. Nice. Just trying to save for some holidays, some yeah. family memories. Yeah. Oh, because you guys, actually, you guys have built a, your own home. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Man, that's yes. another, we'll, we'll talk about that. Mm. <laughs> well, it's like two years now we've been in there. It's yeah, that's long. awesome. Yeah, second year this year, third year next year. Yeah. You so, saved. That's awesome. I guess, what kind of nut story do you guys not have? <laughs> yeah. Like, you've got this lifelong commitment to one another. You've, Children, marriage, home, and we've skipped past a lot more that we could delve into. Um, that time probably won't allow us at this point. But um, you're at home and now holidays, like, and and the future, like, this is amazing. Yeah, I think we sat down not too long ago and decided, like, do we want to do, um, do we want to sit and try and save and maybe renovate parts of the house and like be in that kind of space, you know, heads down. Mm work hard for that or do we want to go and do some stuff while the kids are young and while we've got while we're while we're young yeah ish so um yeah we decided that we wanted to take as much time to be with family and do overseas holidays because yeah. we haven't traveled in ages yeah um and the last time we traveled we just don't travel well every story we have is either ended in lockdown or <laughs> yeah <visa issues. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, tell us about that. Tell oh, us about that. I think it's a pretty cool. T- no, shall we not? <laughs> yes, uh, no. I don't know. Uh, We've got the time. I don't mind. No, I'm, I'm, right. I'm good. We're, I'm, man, it's a Saturday. I, <laughs> Go with it's, it. It's a part of me now, I guess. Hey? And yeah. you know what? It's also the reason we decided to try and have Noah. Yes. So it's a bit of a turning point for that as well. Yeah. T- but we t- got married. Yeah. And then we. We're working normal, had our honeymoon in Bali, so it was nice and cheap, two weeks away. And then all of a sudden, the Coachella lineup came out. And we're young, and so like, I was like, Coachella. Should we go? And he was like, Taylor, we can't go. And I was like, No, yeah, you're right, we can't go anywhere, but we should go. And so, out of nowhere, we booked tickets. This is the year that Beyonce was headlining. Oh, yeah? Hey, okay, Beyonce. <clears throat> and then we saved all our money, we got all the help from like our family to like help us out so that we could book our tickets. Mm. We were going to be camping. We were going to buy our camping stuff there. Like it was messy. But it was our holiday. Where was Coachella taking place? Uh, it's in California. California. So like, I think it's like an hour. Yeah. It's a, outside it's a, of Los Angeles. Yeah, it's a desert yeah. thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is. And so oh, we were so keen. We were like, this is so spontaneous. Like I asked us who we're going to be as a married couple. Woohoo. Uh, so starting strong. And then we, we get dropped off at the airport the night before, and uh, your parents dropped us off in Kuwait too. Yeah, we stayed at we stayed at the you know the, the airport hotels there, the Novotel. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. We stayed there so then we could be ready for the morning. Yeah. And then we get there, and I check in all good, and then they go, "Sorry, Jerome, uh, Mr. Fitty, uh, you're flagged." There, there, where? At the airport check-in line. So it, before we get to the okay. airport. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how they have the kiosks? Yeah. Okay. You put your passport in. Yeah. I was putting my passport in and my details weren't coming up. And I was like, well, why? I kept trying. So then um, we went into the line to actually go talk to someone. Mm. And yeah, they scanned my details. And yeah, they were like, your visa's been flagged. Jason Bourne. Because prior to, <laughs> I wish, that would be much more <laughs> story. But yeah, prior to going to America, you need a, like a, is it like a, oh, like a holiday day? visa? Yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. It's just so you can go to the country. And I had I had organised ours like months before. Joan and... takes care of that stuff too because I get anxious about it that I'm going to do something wrong. Mm. <laughs> and then he gets flagged and she's like, you'll have to go and sort out what's wrong with your visa. And then, yeah, he we went to another line and then he pulls my visa up. And I uh, accidentally ticked the box that says that you're a terrorist. And do you plan on... Committing terrorist activities on your holiday. Yeah. And Jerome went, yep. If someone said, yeah, I'm going to do that, wouldn't you reach out to them before they get to the airport to let them know, oh, okay, yeah. the visa's been that, declined that was... or we're, we're watching you. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, was my thought. So... Oh. They did, but I didn't check. Oh. Yeah. Um, um, oh, it gets worse. Oh. Yeah. I remember <laughs> we checked it later. So I had been notified. Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> a phone call would have been nice. You know, it's like just a spying slip into the skin. No. Look at this. Ta da! Because it wasn't like instant. Like, it didn't instantly uh, say, you know, you've been flagged or whatever. I'm guessing it went through the system. They would have checked it. Then they notified me. But I didn't. I just went, yeah, it's all sweet. And so then we. So how do we get on this plane? And we only had, like, three or four days before the actual festival started. And so, you know, we young and dumb are like, that's home, surely. Mm, And she goes, oh, you'll have to go to the embassy and you'll have to get them to to clear you being a terrorist and being a terrorist activist. And so we're like, no worries. Like, where's the embassy? And she's like, Sydney. And we were saying, (laughs) so good. (laughs) And so we were in the airport early as in we booked the next flight to Sydney. Wow. Flew all the way to Sydney and we didn't get there for some reason until I don't know what happened. Or we were no, we were running around the whole day trying to find the embassy. Trying to you need an appointment as yeah. well. Yeah. You can't just like roll yeah. the we thing and just, help. Hey, the embassy. Up. Yeah, first thing they said was do you have a an appointment? An appointment. <laughs> we're like, no. no. Was there an email? <laughs> <laughs> so she's um she gives us a number and we went to book an appointment. And she was like, yeah, we have appointments available. I was like, sweet. And I was like, it's in four months. <laughs> oh! So four they put you on a months. wait list, so like an emergency wait list. Yeah. So I look back, not an emergency, but we waited there for maybe like two days and then we were having breakfast and we got a call that he had an appointment. And so we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to go. Like, Put look at this. Like, we're, te- we're doing it. Like, this is so good. And then <laughs> I'm waiting for him to have his interview. And you go in and you do all the things that you need to do. And then you come back out and he's so I've approved my visa. And I was like, yes, so good. He goes, but they have to post me my passport and that's going to take a week. Oh, and I'm wow. Saying, and I was thinking, to be like, just kidding. Yeah. That never came. <laughs> so, so we holidayed in Sydney for a week uh, to have <laughs> a holiday experience. That's what I love about Jerome. He's not a not kidding guy. He's, he's not no, never. He tries this straight. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then we're like, don't look at anything, Coachella. Like, just pretend it doesn't exist. It's all good. And then she brings out Destiny's Child. The Destiny's Child reunion, mm. first time in how many years? <laughs> and I'm in Sydney. Oh, yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, no, no, no big deal. No hard feelings. I was just, I, you know what? I was a security guard. Oh, it's not even security. I wasn't even trained. I was just a big body who was, uh, you're who like walking big shoulders, big day out. <laughs> and honestly, this and his child were on a stage just behind my head dancing, and I was not allowed to turn around. Oh, I had to keep my eye out on the well. crowd, and everyone was spaced out. Like they were looking at me, like, uh, but I was like, oh, this and his child is like right there oh, okay. dancing around just behind my head. No. Yeah, and I just had to, I was like, oh. Well, at, at least, least you're at least there. There. <laughs> I guess at least you're still there. I haven't turned around, but every time I turn around, I just got scolded there in the earpiece. It's like, oh. then they pay me. But that's another situation. How how was the question? That would have been tough, man. Oh, I was tough. Like I, I could just grab a lead if I wanted to. <laughs> but I, yeah, Beyonce. But a terrorist? Yeah, I know. What, what was the question like? Was it, you know how they have obscure questions? Like It was, uh... No, I see. It was um, it was like you know you you, you do the declaration thing at, when you get into like a overseas country. Yeah, it's just tick the box, and I and I oh, went. I, it was a section with like firearms, 
trust. Ten thousand dollars. And Please I, tick the right boxes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Please. Yeah. Take the time. Yeah. You know, it's not worth it. But I just went, I was doing the no, 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 no. Yes, no. Bad book of never. Bad book of never. And because I did our last, because we went to America a few years before, or the year before, I did ours then. No issues. So I was like, I got this. And yeah. Silly that mistake. That was our journey and that's mm. okay. Far out. And you know what? Ever since Coachella just hasn't had the same. Nah, the lineups <laughs> since then have been rubbish. But... Take take away though. I've got a ten year American yeah. visa. So. Oh, so it's still. I don't need a fill wow. out that. So, so you're <laughs> kosher, bro. Yeah. You are I'm absolutely in my kosher. Passport, I've got a US visa in the back of it. So. That's like one step away from citizen. Yeah. yeah. You're a citizen, bro. Oh, wow. So I well, think I'm going to last my New Zealand passport too, I think. Hey, true. I have uh, just um, final uh, final things. That I, like we've done this with the other guests. We, we want to take this opportunity because we know the medium of um, the internet is forever now. There will be at some stage in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, where your children will stumble across this video and uh, you may or may not be around. I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to pull on heartstrings or anything, but and I'm, I'm massive on this lady. Like, and this is part of why I wanted to do this was um, I, I think we have an opportunity to take advantage of something that can be negative in the wrong hands and can be negative in the wrong perspective. Mm-hmm. But you, there's an opportunity here to yeah. leave a message yeah. of hope um, for your children, for your family, um, that they can come back to and use as a reference point for encouragement in the future. Mm. Um, this is obviously not the only way. I still encourage that you get involved as you are with your children. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just just ignore them for the next 20 years. <laughs> you go, watch the video. All right, just watch the video in 20 years, turn it off. Um, I still encourage that we get engaged, all of us, to get engaged with our children, our marriages, mm-hmm. all of our relationships. But I think uh, for them to just capturing this moment in time, what would you like to say to 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 Noah, to Nelani, uh, to one another, mm. and then maybe to your parents as well and family? I I don't know. Doesn't have to be in that order. I just think um, um, it would be a great opportunity. And take your time thinking about it. I can get it up. Whatever <laughs> needs to be. <laughs> Do you know this? Oh. Three. Ah. Uh, I would say for my children, um, just be humble and be grateful, but do it every day, right? Because it's a challenge to do those things every day. And as you grow up, as you you experience things, and things get hard or things get really good, uh, that's the thing that's going to keep you with your feet on the ground and I just going to keep you reminded of what you already have, you know? Cause in this world, I feel like we're such a... Um, if I could speak for a generation, like, there's always something that you're going to want. There's always something you don't have. Mm. And you can get so caught up on that so fast. So just humble yourself, come back and go, I want those things. And it's it's good to want stuff. Uh, but look at what I have and look at what I've already done. And I think that I really want my children to have that, mm. that outlook on their life, that you have enough as you are. Mm. Uh, to my mom, I just want to say that I love you. Thank you for teaching me how to be more selfless as a person uh, and as a parent. And I think that um, as your kids grow, you can keep growing with them. So as a mom, I want to shout out to the moms out there that even though it's hard, uh, you just keep growing with your kids every day and you'll be all right. And I'll be dry. I can say um, to my kids, I guess, yeah, like, no matter, like Noah, let's say Noah, no matter what um, you're going through, whether it be cruisy, whether it be hardship, the struggles, um, don't be scared to, or don't feel like you have to take it all on yourself. Because um, I think as as a dad, um, as a man, we feel like we have to carry everything. Um, and then what happens is you do that too much. You start to resent the things around you. Mm. So talk about it, talk it out, 
come to me, talk to me. Um, use people that have mm. already uh, paved the way or have spent time in your in your shoes before you fill that space. So, yeah, I think that's really important is, yeah, don't try and carry everything because um, it just makes it, makes things harder. Mm. Um, whether you've got a family and kids at this point, um, yeah, love them, love them. Um, and Neilani, just... Uh, Copy your mum. <laughs> your mum's your mum's already That's good. done you know, she's already done it and um I know that she's the best example for what it means to be a wife, to be a mother to your children, or just or just being a woman in general. She's um she's done the best job of all of that. So mm. yeah, yeah. Copy your mum. Uh, yeah, and to my family, um, thank you for everything that you've done for us um, and continue to do. Um, yeah, as I said, mum and dad were the blueprint for me and uh, I'll always be grateful for that. And hopefully I can show a little bit of that for our family. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just on that note, I just want to say thank you again mm. for um, for giving up your time this morning, the last three hours to be here mm. and to share uh, the journey that you guys have been on. And man, I'm looking forward to seeing what the next 10, 20 years is going to be like. Mm. 